welcome back to Ron Hasn't Seen. Tonight I'm talking about 1980s Raging Bull. This is part of my 1980s series of movies I haven't seen that I've gone back and watched for the first time. Uh, Raging Bull is Martin Scorsese's boxing biopic starring Robert De Niro as Jake LaMotta. It was written by Paul Schrader and Marty Martin based off of LaMotta's 1970 memoir. It co-stars Joe Pesci and Kathy Moriarty, uh, both in their breakout performances. The film opens in 1941 with LaMotta as a rising young middleweight fighter who loses his first match in a decision. Jake's brother Joey, meanwhile, played by Joe Pesci, is trying to get him a shot at the title, but that's going to require some mob influence, and Jake is refusing to get involved with that. Uh, at this point, Jake is married, but he, that marriage kind of seems like a disaster, and he starts a relationship with Moriarty's 15-year-old Vicky, who he marries a few years later. We follow Lamada through some wins and losses in his career and his relationship with Vicky, and we see his growing jealousy. Jake starts a fight with some of the local wise guys over her because she goes and says hi to them, and they were old neighborhood friends. And so the local boss has to intervene and talks Jake into throwing a fight to get a shot at the championship. Jake throws the fight, but throws it so badly he's suspended from boxing for a few years. He eventually wins the title in 1949. At, the, at some point after that, he accuses Joey and Vicky of having an affair and beats both of them. He does reconcile with Vicky, but is now estranged from his brother he's not talking to anymore. He does eventually lose the title, uh, and you know, as an older and overweight guy, he moves to Miami uh, and opens a club. Vicky leaves him at this point, taking the kids with her, and at some point he's arrested for underage girls in the club. Uh, it says he, looking it up, it says he was arrested for hooking them up with uh, other men. He moves back to New York, he reconciles with Joey, and he's now performing stand-up. The idea for the film started with De Niro when he read the memoir where he was on the set of Godfather 2. He tried to talk Scorsese into it a couple times, but Scorsese really hated sports and sports films. He finally agreed to do it after Scorsese OD'd, and he felt more of a connection to Lamada's story, and he thought it would help save his career after, you know, that whole OD thing. Uh, Marty Martin's first version of the script didn't seem to have any real fans to it, so it was passed on to Schrader, whose version was touched up later by De Niro and Scorsese, who spent two and a half weeks working on it, but... Uh, they never got a writing credit for WGA reasons. Famously, the movie took a four-month break during filming so De Niro can gain 70 pounds to become the older, uh, heavier version of LaMotta. And even those final scenes at the end at this point took over seven weeks to shoot because De Niro was in such poor health from gaining that weight so fast. Uh, the film was met with mediocre returns and reviews, but... You know, by the Oscars, it received nominations for Best Picture, Best Director, Supporting Actor for Pesci, Supporting Actress for Moriarty, Cinematography, and Sound. It did win De Niro, his Best Actor Oscar, and it won Best Editing for Thelma Schoonmacher. In 2012, Raging Bull 2 was being filmed uh, based on LaMotta's early life and what happened after the memoir was written. Uh, this was all in the original memoir, like, but it wasn't part of the movie. But, you know, MGM sued and the name was changed to the Bronx Bowl. Uh, also, I know some people have always joked, I don't know how serious it was, I think it might have even been part of the marketing, but the movie Grudge Match from 2013 with De Niro and Stallone was always kind of thought as of LaMotta versus Rocky, kind of like taking their boxing characters and putting them together. So I did go into Raging Bull expecting more of a Rocky-type movie, and that's not what you get. Uh, this film takes a darker look at a boxer's life. Uh, while Amada's fame and career, his ups and downs, are part of the draw of the film, the boxing itself isn't the central part of the movie. The fights don't take front and center, but the cinematography in them really does stand out. There are scenes where you look into the crowd and all you see is blackness behind him. It feels almost like a period piece the way it's shot with the cinematography like it would be really from the 40s and 50s and the black and white kind of adds to that uh but the film is 
definitely a Scorsese film and feel. Uh, you know, it follows people because they're interesting, not because we're supposed to be rooting for them. Joey and Vicky are sympathetic characters for their interactions with Jake, but we can't really feel sorry for the, you know, main character because he's a man who orchestrates his own downfall uh, by just reaching into his character flaws and not fighting them. Uh, De Niro's performance is flawless, and, you know, his legendary weight gain, mount aside, uh, you know, I know that it was brought up, like, times when Christian Bale was fluctuating weight between the Batman movies and the Machinist and Rescue Dawn, but De Niro's performance is amazing in this. He's completely believable, so into the character. You don't even realize it's De Niro, and he's such a, you know distinctive face it just he really inhabits his character in something like i haven't really seen um and you know pesci and moriarty as newcomers really do stand out as well and as i said the film is both very scorsese and shot like something from the 40s and 50s and scorsese being a film brat film school brat really kind of would have been able to play into that uh, it, and it, you forget it's this anachronistic black and white because it just feels so right in that format and it feels so of the time. Uh, you know, one of the things I did feel like that finale scene where Lamada is talking to himself in the mirror, giving him himself like a pep talk before he goes out to perform as a stand up comedian. Obviously, I think this was the inspiration for the finale of Boogie Nights where. Dirk Diggler is kind of doing the same thing, talking himself up to get back into the game. And, you know, I've, I've seen other people online say that. I don't know if it's true, but it seems very clear if you watch the scene. Yeah, the movie, it's quintessential Scorsese through and through, and it's amazingly done. You know, if you don't go into expecting these boxing fight scenes to be well, like super well choreographed and things like that, they're beautifully shot, but they're not... They're not Rocky. They're not a martial arts film. They're a drama that happens to have boxing. So go into that knowing this, and I think you're really going to enjoy this movie if you haven't seen it. It really is a classic. Uh, more than a lot of these others I <laughs> put on the 80s, this is a film to study and to watch. You know, Roadhouse was fun. Pretty in Pink is a good teen comedy. And When Harry Met Sally, you know, is a quintessential romance but this of the four 80s films in my little series here is going to be the one i would say tops the list as a film you know it might not be the one i want to throw on again and again but it's the one if i was making a film i want to reference for the cinematography and the design so that's it for this episode of Ron Hasn't Seen, Raging Bull, is a definite watch on my list. I'm uh, going to continue this with Harry Met, When Harry Met Sally, and then go into our Halloween series. Uh, starting with the original Halloween. But thank you guys for watching Ron Hasn't Seen. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Uh, just seeing any kind of growth is kind of thing that keeps me going on the channel uh so thank you guys once again and see you next week